tonight, let's bring in Florida Congressman Michael Waltz, who serves on the House Armed Services and Foreign Affairs Committee. Congressman, good morning to you. Uh, it is incredibly rare hey, morning, for Carly. Kim Jong-un to leave the country, but now we're hearing he's going to take a trip to Russia to talk about a possible arms deal. Put this development into perspective for us. Well, this has been in the works for a while. The Russian Defense Minister Shoigu uh, visited Pyongyang, uh, you know, about about a month ago to set this deal up. Uh, and look, uh, this is significant in a couple of ways. One, uh, I, I'm not as worried about the equipment. Uh, the, North Korea has been stockpiling and, and using uh, Russian-made equipment for 70 years uh, in, in its military dictatorship, but I'm very worried about the amount of ammunition that they could provide, particularly artillery. Uh, and they can provide thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds that will allow Russia to stretch the war out in Ukraine. And if it settles down into a stalemate, if the Ukrainian counteroffensive breaks down and is not effective, uh, this will allow Putin to absolutely continue the war. And then the other thing, Carly, is this is an extension of the unholy alliance yeah. uh, of Iran, China, Russia, and uh, North Korea, the new axis of evil. And I'm not seeing anything in terms of a strategy from the Biden administration to drive wedges in between uh, the axis of evil here to disrupt what's going on, this new alliance. You basically just see kind of a shoulder shrug from the White House. Well, you mentioned China, and there's this big report out of the Wall Street Journal that says that uh, Chinese nationals sometimes posing as tourists have gained access to military bases as many right. as 100 times times over the last few years. And the report says that these incidents range from Chinese nationals found crossing into a U.S. missile range in New Mexico to what appears to be scuba divers swimming in murky waters near a U.S. government rocket launch site in Florida. And when they get caught, they all use the same scripted language. They say that they're tourists who lost their way, even though they're in rural parts of the country where no tourists would go. So how serious this? What sort of information are they trying to obtain? And have any of them been successful? No, it, it's incredibly serious, Carly, and this is just part of the, the avalanche of espionage, of Chinese espionage that we are under right now, uh, whether it's cyber, whether it's the spy balloon, whether it's new spy bases uh, in Cuba uh, taking a play right out of the Soviet Union's old playbook, or these what the Chinese call non-traditional collectors, uh, that they are just throwing as many out there as they can uh, to kind of see what sticks and see what they could collect. And a lot of these people are being coerced, uh, whether they're researchers, students, uh, or these air quotes, you know, tourists, uh, because if they don't do it, their fam their Chinese families suffer back home. Wow. Uh, and that's how they that's how they force them to do it. But the problem is, Carly, what's the consequences yeah. from the Biden administration? Nothing. They get more and more meetings from more cabinet secretaries. And so the message that they're getting in Beijing is there's no downside to doing this. Let's do more. And yeah. that's why you're seeing such an upcrease. There's no consequences. And you can imagine how an American would be treated in China if uh, an American was found near a Chinese military base. Meanwhile, these Chinese <laughs> suspected spies are getting uh, just trespassing violations, which is essentially a parking ticket. So something definitely needs to happen there. Uh, the G20 summit in India is going to take place this weekend. Uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping says that he's apparently not going to go. Uh, the president addressed that briefly with this clip here. Take a listen. I am disappointed. I'm going to get to see him. Thank, Thank you. So he said he's disappointed, but he's going to see Xi Jinping at some point in the future. Why wouldn't uh, the Chinese president go? What do you make of this? Well, I was just in India, Carly, and this is about uh, China's disputed border with India. Uh, China just released a new map uh, that shows it taking over the entire South China Sea and portions of India as well. Uh, I, look, uh, this Chinese aggression just can't go unchecked. And the problem from the Biden administration is they're stuck in the old thinking of if we can just engage them more, if we can just send more high level meetings, uh, that the Chinese will begin uh, behaving as a responsible mm -hmm. international actor. And it's, it's just not going to work. They see it, Beijing sees this as a signal to take more. Uh, and I think 
make Biden so disappointed is because he was sending all of his cabinet secretaries to lead up to a meeting at the G20 with him and she. And now she has said, you know what, I'm not going to bother. And we're going to continue with all of our all of our spying, yeah. all of the aggression. They're doing it because they can get away with yeah, it. Yeah, Gina Raimondo was just in China, even though China hacked into her email, uh, her government email account. So a lot going on on that front. Congressman Waltz, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.